Okay, class seven. First of all, the um, assignment that you guys have done, um, I've seen some pretty outstanding results actually. There's some really cool stuff. However, it took a ridiculous amount of time and still people found that they didn't have enough time. Um, so we've got to do the next project in the time allocated. Um, that first assignment for the last 14 years, people have done it in four to five weeks, depending on how our, our semester's gone. You guys had about two months plus. So, but yeah. Anyway, there was some really good results. So I am kind of confident, though, that your CAD skills were probably higher than those um, have done the course previously anyway, on average. All right, so today, I want to first of all go over any big problems you guys had with assignment one, and if there's anything that you found was difficult or um, you want me to go over in more detail. Was there anything that you really struggled with? Probably one thing that you would have struggled with is when it came to printing, there was no way of organizing your layout. Okay, so that's one thing that we're going to be going over, um, not so much today, but um, for this the next assignment. Um, however, you've got most of the skills required to sort of get there in a, um, in, a, in a very orderly manner. We're also going to look at then, um, oh, printing. People are setting scales. I've, I've seen it on a few people setting the scales incorrectly. Um, when you go file print, if you go and change the scale at the print thing, that's when everything gets shrunk or, or stretched. So some of you might have find, found that on, um, on, especially on sections and things like that, your hatching was different sizes on your printouts, or the text changed sizes on the printouts. Um, you need to change the scale down there in the bottom left. So even if you go file print, and it's not going to fit and say, go, oh, 1 to 2,000, oh, that fits perfectly, cancel the print and go to there and change that to 1 to 2,000 because then it will change your drawing to be 1 to 2,000, including all the hatching and, and lines and all that. Otherwise, it will just shrink everything to fit on the page, okay? or stretch everything to fit on the page. So that's why your fills and your line weights and all that just get stretched when you do it at the print dialog. All right. So what are we going to do today then? Obviously, we've got another assignment, so we're going to talk about that. And in fact, I might as well hand it out now. Or um, Matthew can. All right. Okay, so you've already seen. I, um, oh, can I have one, to please, Matthew? Um, I've already made a mistake, and I always do this, is I either get the date wrong, or the day wrong, or the year wrong, and I thought I'd looked at everything in a fine tooth comb, and then realised just as I was about to walk into the, into the room that I had put Monday instead of Friday. Um, it's correct on Moodle, though, so if you print it out again, you'll get the correct date. There's one other mistake as well in there, but um, I'll let you guys find it. It's a spelling mistake. Ah, there we go. See, so he's a smart fella. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so, um, so yeah, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be modeling this courtyard out here. And we're also going to be modeling the facade of the building. Now, this does border on architecture. However, you can't design that space without dealing with the, the building. It would look weird if you just showed a courtyard with nothing around it because there is something, there's the building there. So we're going to um, model the entire facade of this, um, of this courtyard um, and we're going to be using lots of really cool ways of doing it. This building is quite a challenge because the windows aren't just square aluminium frames and um, the walls aren't just flat you know, concrete cinder block. They've got all sorts of little features and everything in them. And so we're going to um, actually model a lot of these features. And some of these things we're going to be able to model just really accurately and really, really easily too, using some really cool tricks. Um, there's a thing called the profiled wall 
Um, and so we can actually just draw the wall in section and then just draw with it everywhere and it connects it all up and makes everything work for us. We're also going to play around with materials. So we're going to create our own textures. So we're going to create our own brick textures and grass textures, whatever, whatever you want to create textures of. Um, and we're going to apply that to our, our objects. Um, we can even apply them to doors and stuff. So you can actually put you know, a picture of a door on a door. There's always a little bit of a challenge with that. We'll see what happens this year. Um, what else? Oh, and then we're going to do we're going to do like a little design as well. And whatever you design there, I don't care. Um, it's your own um, your own brief, really. It should be student focused and you know kind of smart, something that you'd like to stick in your CV. Um, but the brief is incredibly open, and you can design whatever you like. You should also remember that you should be showing off some of your CAD skills as well. Okay, you show off your CAD skills, you get lots of marks. Hey. <laughs> All right. Um, there are some other interesting parts to this. We're going to, um, so that you really want to try and get most of the model done in, in, over the next couple of weeks. So it's going to be pretty hard going. Um, if we need an extra week, we'll use it. However, I'd like to try and get this done in three weeks so that we can get the next one, next assignment done in about the same space. Otherwise, we're going to be going further and further into the holiday break to hand in the last assignment, which kind of sucks. Um, we should have been almost finished. Well, we should have about another week to go to hand in this one. So we're about a week or two behind now. And it's not entirely your guys' fault because of the way that the break and the, and the um, IFLA thing worked out, kind of screwed things up for us. So I totally understand and we'll be totally reasonable with trying to get this um, assignment done. Um, so yeah, so we're going to do a sun study. So once we've got the model built up, we can actually locate where we are on the planet and which direction north is, and then the computer will um, create a little animation showing the sun moving across our site at certain times of the year, even at a particular time. So we're going to be doing that. Um, we're also going to do a little fly through so you can get a camera to move through the site and it creates a little movie. And we're going to be looking at the sun studies and the movies um, in class. Um, they're actually relatively easy to do, you, but first you need a model to do it in. Um, we're also going to be looking at doing um, uh, a detail which isn't far off what you guys did with the cross section. It's very, very similar. So we're going to look at detailing and also dimensioning. So creating all your dimensions. The dimensions, the dimensioning tool is really cool. It will actually like attach to an object. So if you go and change the length of a wall, the dimensions will move with the wall. So you don't have to go and redimension anything. However, there is a little gotcha with it. If you just kind of sketch things up and don't really think about the lengths of stuff, when you go and dimension it, you get horrible looking dimensions that you then might want to go around trying to fudge them all and then you're just ending up in a world of pain. So it's a very good idea to draw accurately. Um, otherwise, everything starts to look rather ugly. Um, you know, you go measure angles and they're like, you know, 91 degrees and you know, 46 degrees and it's like, uh, if I just held that shift key when I went and drew that wall, I wouldn't have this problem now. Um, is there anything else interesting in there? Don't think so. All right. So first thing I want to do is I want uh, we're going to look at setting up a drawing. We kind of went over this when we first started using um, ArchiCAD. However, I'm going to look at it in a little bit more detail now because now you kind of you understand what ArchiCAD is. It's going to make a lot more sense to you. So what we're going to do this morning is we're going to create a template. Um, as well, just, just for the fun of it really. A template is basically, it'll have all of your layers and um, settings and the way that you want ArchiCAD all set up saved as, well, as a template. So when you go and create a new project, you can go file new, use my own template and it has all these things um, stored. We're also going to look at um, some of the other options for configuring ArchiCAD. Um, there's some, and I've, a lot of this I'm going to show you where it is and you can have a little play around in there, there's no real requirement, but you might find that it really suits you. Um, and yeah, there's little things that you found annoying about ArchiCAD, you can actually adjust and change and create keyboard shortcuts and even create your own little menu of things if you find it's a real pain in the ass going to 
you know, do a photo render and go and document creative imaging, creative imaging, and you just want to create your own little palette or your own keyboard shortcut, we can do that. Um, I highly recommend that because I find it annoying. Um, sorry, I've got a little look at my list of things. Um, yeah, I will look a little bit at, um, at ob objects and stuff as well. And we'll look at the basics of doing the materials today. Uh, next week, we're going to be looking at some really cool tools. There's a, a thing called a truss maker. So you can just basically draw up the sh um, like just 2D lines of how you want a truss made up. And then you can start doing it with bits of I-beam and steel and bolts, and it all puts it all in for you. So we can make trusses. And we're going to be looking at um, a mesh to roof tool and looking at a different way of um, doing terrain modeling. Walls and beams, blah, 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 stairs. Um, yes, yeah, so, so there's some very interesting things we're going to be going through. And there's, there's lots of plugins and stuff as well. So let's start off. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a couple little changes here. First thing, I can't stand this bloody yellow background, so I'm going to change that. So it's a good idea when you're going to about to start a project just to kind of get the work environments set up nicely. So if you don't like the... The grids, remember you can go to view, um, grids and editing, plane options, grids and background. Cool, get rid of this horrible yellow colour. I might just go for a, um, I might just go for like a, a lightish grey, lighter blue grey or something like that. Let's try that. No, it needs to be lighter. Yeah, that's something cool. And I go OK and boom. All right. No, that doesn't really work on the projector though. Boop, 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 boop. Where are we? View. Grids and editing. Why does it look so pale? Oh, let's go white. Yeah. You can actually, any, if you ever see the same color palette thing, you can actually save colours in here, so if you go, oh, I really like that shade of red, you can drag them down here and you can use them elsewhere as well. Just to so if you want white, you can go and click on white. You know, I might actually add black to that list as well. You know, here's a mid-grey. So you can actually make your own little palettes up. You know, here's my slightly off-white. Okay, that's looking better. All right. Next thing I want is I don't want any of these um, elevations in here, so I'm going to delete all those elevations. Select all, delete, yep, delete the viewports. Excellent, delete. Okay, do I want sea level, ground level, and, and floor? Well, actually, we are going to have multiple levels in this project because we've got the ground floor here and we've got the second floor up there. In fact, there's a basement as well. So, what are we going to do about that? Um, the cool thing with stories, I can't remember if I was going to talk about stories today, am I? Yes, I think I am. Um, the cool thing with stories, right, is that you've, it's kind of like having a whole set of drawings just at a different elevation. So you can, and I've seen people do it before, you can actually have two stories at exactly the same height, and it's like, you know, drawing A and drawing B. Yeah, so it's actually like two completely different designs within the same ARCHICAD document. All the layers still have, are appropriate and everything, but it's on different stories. I don't know if that's a great idea, but, you know. I've seen people using stories actually just to keep a whole bunch of symbols. You know how you can use the eyedropper, you know, to pull the settings out of something? So you kind of come up with like a little palette, if you like, of like trees and walls and all that sort of carry on and just have them all on one story, and you can just fuck over that story, pull the settings of it out, and then flip back to the other story and use them, which is, yeah, it's kind of creative. There's lots of ways of using ARCHICAD, okay? There's, I could store those somewhere else, but that's kind of cool. Um, but the other cool thing with this, of course, is that we're going to have our ground floor. Now, there's a few different things that you think about when you deal with heights, right? So we need a project zero. Now, with our last project, our project zero was um, sea level, okay? And so we were dealing with everything above sea level. And you might have found that that got a little bit confusing when you're having to deal with some of the buildings, 
because they're at like you know 15 meters, and then you're going to think, okay, well that means that the wall's going from 15 meters to 17 point, you know, and all sort of carry on. It's kind of annoying. Um, if we're doing this courtyard, trying to do everything at sea level would be kind of nutty. You know, we've got this flat area out here that we want to build on. It's like it would be more logical to have a project zero, you know, zero height relative to something in this space. Okay, we still want to deal with sea levels occasionally because we're doing a terrain model. Doesn't really matter though because if we got contours for this site, um, they're going to be pretty meaningless. Even one metre contours isn't really going to describe the site because it's too small. So we'd probably do our heights relative again to something in this, in this area. So what I would do is I would choose something that was quite normal through the entire site. Um, and I'd usually go for like a floor level or out here maybe you know, um, a, you know, one corner of the site or something like that. So you've got a zero. So that means though that you're dropping downhill so you might have some negative values, but that's cool. I don't know how you guys think. I don't mind negative numbers. Some people might decide actually I want zero to be the lowest point of the wall you know, by long black down the bottom there and I'm going to measure everything relative to that. That's cool as well. So we've got a project zero. Let's say we use um, the floor level, um, let's say the ground level just outside here. Okay, so you know, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty relatively flat through this entire section just outside here. So we decide, okay, that's our project zero. That's cool. But how about if we wanted to put something in the second floor? Um, that's going to be kind of annoying because then I'd be having to put like a chair on the floor on the second level. We don't have to go to that kind of detail, but just for the sake of argument. Yeah, then I'd be going, okay, well that means that I'm three and a half metres up, you know, so that means the chair's at 3.5 metres. Yeah, okay. But what we can do is we just have another whole story that's at 3.5 metres. In fact, you can move it as well if you get it wrong. And so then you've got two sets of numbers. You've got your project zero and you've got your height to story level two or whatever. So when you're on story level two, you just go and set it to zero. It's on the floor and on story two. It's annoying. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It's just, it's just kind of annoying. You could break it up into other stories, and you probably see that with um, building plans sometimes. You know, you'll have ground floor, and then the split level, and then the top floor. So you could deal with it that way. You could just go, well, here's ground floor, and over here it's one and a half metres higher. Yeah, so. But that's why it's quite good to kind of think about how you're going to have your drawings set up right from scratch. So, you know, you go onto site. Oh, look, you're here. <laughs> and then um, you can have a look around and kind of figure out how you're going to organise your drawing and how you're going to organise your whole workflow. Um, I have given you lots of other um, plans and stuff. Um, and so, actually, I'll show you that quickly just to so see you're kind of familiar with the whole project. On Momus, which of course I can't see. Oops. And landscape, then 6230 assignment 2 files. I've um, got a whole bunch of building plans in there. Now, I know this says it's to scale, but and I think they have been updated, but I would totally do a lot of ground truthing, and I'm going to show you how to, um, how to measure up a site as well, so that's a good opportunity. Um, but there's a whole bunch of plans in here, so you can here's our, our building. So what we're going to do, well, actually, first thing, whenever you get plans like this, you've got to understand what, they are, what their purpose is. These are not to construct this building. These are simply used to do asset management. So when they draw them up, they're not really that concerned about whether or not the walls are the right thickness or the buildings are the right size. They're kind of more interested in the proportions and the room numbers, you know, where the doors are, that sort of thing. So whenever you get given some buildings like this, you can see here it says facilities management. So that's the client. 
okay, their use of drawings is quite different to somebody who's going to be doing the landscaping out here and needs to know exactly how much concrete they need to fill in a courtyard. Okay? So whenever you get plans, be very, very careful who they were intended for, what their purpose was, and how accurate they are. And so never just kind of just assume, yep, these are perfect, these are at what, 1 to 200 on A3, excellent, I can just drop that straight into, um, into Archicad and scale it up and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Big warning. I know that the, um, the last lot that we had were completely wrong. And like, yeah, there's, there's big differences in the lengths of things and widths and alleyways and things like that. So we're going to actually um, get the laser, um, hopefully today. It looks like the weather's going to be pretty awesome for it. And we're going to take a few measurements. Now, some of your predecessors have done this as well. And you will find it on Moodle. Uh, if it lets me in. Uh, where are we? Land six, two, three, all. Oh. And it's in if it ever happens to you, you know, see if you click on that, it only shows you um, part of the course. I don't know why that would be an advantage, but it confused the hell out of me. Um, I can't remember where it is now. I think it's the Archicad forum. Social forum. Yep, courtyard measurements. Now, be careful because there's already mistakes in there. You see other people have taken photos and measured stuff as well. But yeah, I think this measurement here was wrong. That one through there. Now, how do we draw this up though? One big problem is, let's say, if we look at this, um, this this building here actually, that we're inside. If you start measuring up, now a classic way of doing this, that, you know, which is wrong, is you go out and you measure, take all the measurements and then you go and you go, right, here's this, we're going to call this our origin, okay, so that's a little X on our drawing. We're going to start here and I'm going to start drawing. So I go, okay, that's 4.81 and 15.12, then I come down whatever that measurement is, then across, and then I go up 10.32, and then I go over, and I start doing all this. Now, usually what happens is by the time I get over here, all of a sudden this wall doesn't line up with this wall. It's out by heaps. Anybody know why? That's true, yeah, the walls might, might be 90 degrees. Anything else? Yep, well that the error actually of um, of my measurements. If I'm out a little bit, every every time I take a measurement there's an error. Okay, I can't be yeah one hundred percent accurate. So what I just did is I just added all of my errors together. So I've just one error, two errors, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten errors all compiled on top of each other. Okay? Another one is I might have just measured it wrong, any one of those wrong and I would have no idea which one it was. So it's like, okay, I'm out. I've, there's so many things that could have gone wrong, I, and I've got no idea. So I'm going to show you Zane's patented technique of drawing up a site. And what we need is a common wall, you know, a common wall or a common straight line or a reference of some description. Okay, and that could be something that you've drawn out yourself. Okay, it could be like, okay, here's my line going across here. And then what we do is we're going to measure everything off this reference line. Okay, so if we take this wall that runs through here, we can do all of our horizontals and all of our verticals. Okay, so what that means is that I measure the distance from here to here and here to here. Now I want to try and get as many as I can. I can even double up occasionally. So I might 
measure from here to here, from here to here if I can, and also this measurement in here, this measurement back to here, this measurement, this measurement, all of those measurements, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw them all up. So I'm going to start doing this, in fact. Um, can I actually? If you've got two screens, it's a, a blessing. Come on, you should have a piece of paper with your own drawings on it. So, oopsies. I'm going to grab a, a line tool, just like this one. Um, I'm going to put it onto a new layer called construction lines. This is going on to construction lines. And I'm going to start off with doing um, my horizontals. So I'm just going to draw a line straight down, just like that. So you can see my first one here I've got is um, 6.41. So I'm just going to do, just coming off that blue line, doesn't matter where, 6.41. So I go, actually I'm just going to change my uh, Work environment, oh, sorry, project preferences, working units, change that to meters. That's right, I was going to set up a template, wasn't I? I'm jumping the gun zone. Two decimal places. Yep, that's all cool. Okay. Damn. I am kind of jumped the gun. I forgot to create my template. Um, all right, so we go six point. Oh, that little thing's not showing up again. Remember this guy? If he doesn't show up, just switch him on and off. 6.41. Okay, and then I'm just going to draw a line up like this. Doesn't matter how far. So what I've done is I've actually just, I've kind of reverse engineered dimensioning. Okay, normally when you dimension something, you know, you've got a whole bunch of stuff, you cast lines off it and then, you know, write the distance. I've done the opposite. I've drawn in the dimension Okay, and so I know that that distance from there to there is that wall. Cool? All right. Um, I look like I'm missing some numbers there, it doesn't matter. All right, so we've also got this um, along here, have we? No, we're missing that number as well. That kind of sucks because I need that one. But let's say it was 15.12 as well. So then I go 15.12. Oh, and that one's going to go up here like that. Um, this is missing lots of dimensions, isn't it? I think there's another one in there somewhere, isn't there? Is that also in the social forum? Oh, yeah, assessment to... Don't blame me if they're wrong. All right. See, that says 15.16. You can see we've already got errors. Um, I have, look, see, here's a 3.66 across this wall. Now, I'm measuring, right? See, so remember I had this measurement here of 6.43. I don't know what the other guy said, but anyway. Um, this 3.66 is measured off that wall, that same wall. So what I do is I do that graphically. I can actually go in here and I draw off this line. I make it quite obvious. What was it? 3.66. 3.66. 3.66. All right, cast that up. Now, the reason I do that is that if I got this measurement wrong, I'd know that that means all this has to move as well. So I can see exactly where my error was. Otherwise, I probably would have gone, oh, I've got that wall wrong, and change it. And then uh, what else has to change now? And I don't know what I've measured from what objects, and I'm kind of screwed. I'm also going to show you that there's a bit of error correction that comes into this as well. Um, all right, what other measurements have we got here? Bugger all. See, so I've got to go out and do some measurements anyway. Okay, let's do the, um, the verticals. So I've got 4.76 going up in that direction. Alright, so we do a line out, cruise up, we're going, was it 4.76? Kind of annoying it. Cool, and cast the line out. So that's actually, I don't have to go too far because that's it. That's that to, the, to that wall. 
All right, and we've got that other one. So I can actually start putting walls in now. Now, remember, very important which side my wall appears. If I do it like I'm doing right now, that space has just got smaller. Got to make sure that my wall goes onto the inside. Okay, so there's a wall that goes out to here. Actually, I don't know how far it goes in that direction. It also goes out in this direction, but on the other side of the line. And it's going to go up to here. Then it's going to come out, and it's going to come out to here. Cool. So I've got those walls in. Oh, we've got a 1.7. So that 1.7 is measured off this line. So I just go from here down D 1.7. Cool, cast that out. Excellent. So now I know there's a wall that goes, oopsies, wall tool. Remember you can use your eyedropper. Okay, there's a 4.4 .4 and that's measured off this wall. Okay, so that's off here. So again, I can just use the eyedropper to grab my line. So that's going to come along here. Uh, was it 4.4? .4? go D 4.4. Oh, that's going along there. Okay, so I can see everything that I've measured. I can also, if I, unfortunately I don't think I have, but if I had the, the distance from this wall to this wall, I could put that in here and I would see whether or not I've made a mistake. Because if I'd, made a mis if I'd measured that distance and it didn't line up, if it was half a metre out, so, oh, okay, I've made a mistake somewhere. So it's kind of like an error correction. And then I can go through and go, oh, I got this distance here wrong. I can fix that and I know what I have to move. Because I know cause as soon as I go and move that out and I move all of those measurements, I see that all those lines don't line up with my walls. I can adjust my walls and everybody's happy again. Um, you will make mistakes, especially on a big project. You'll make lots of mistakes. And the trick is, is to be able to find them and fix them quickly. If you went around the entire building doing what I did before, you'd end up with big mistakes. And if someone said, oh, you got that distance wrong, Oh, okay, so that means all this has to move. You know? Or you find that all of a sudden an alleyway is too narrow. And it's like, shit, I don't know how I, that happened. And you've got to try and figure out which of your hundreds of measurements is wrong, which means going back onto site and checking every single measurement, which is not cool. <laughs> so if you do it like this, so you're always drawing up exactly what you measured and where you measured from, then as soon as you find a mistake, you find out that this is wrong, you know that, oh, okay, that means that this whole back of the wall of the other building's got to move as well because I measured that off, off the same line. You know? So it's by far the, um, the easiest way to do it. And you can back this up as well. If you had um, the dumper, you can go and you know, get some angles in there. You know? Not that it's actually physically possible in this space to set up a dumpy here, but if you... Um, put a dumpy in there and you knew that it was you know, so many degrees to a corner and another corner, you could draw those lines straight across your entire drawing and make sure that everything still lines up. If it's out, it's like, okay, why is that? It's like, oh, this wall isn't straight or something like that. So, yeah, it's very handy. So I don't mind you um, using previous year's measurements, but I would totally try and back up these numbers and like, you know, to make sure, is this actually 58.2? Yeah, but it is cool. Yeah. So I don't mind you doing that at all. All right. Now, as I said before, I kind of jumped the gun. And I was going to talk about um, the work environment. So, um, we had a look at most of this. We had a look at the working units. Okay, so that's what we just did. We've seen that before. Remember, you can change these whenever you like. So a project like this one, you might be going between millimetres and metres all the time. You know, if you're working on some small little area, working in metres can be kind of annoying. So you can flick it to meet millimetres, and you just do that whenever you like. Um, now, project location. All right, let's have a look. Now, you can actually, you'll see that you can actually choose a city, right? So here's Auckland. Oh, Auckland International. F. This has actually got all the New Zealand ones in it. Um, if we set that, if you go show in Google Maps, so you'll find that you're in, at the end of, um, uh, of the tank farm there. Oh, I discovered something new with Google Maps today. I don't know if you guys have seen this. 
It kind of freaked me out. <laughs> we go and zoom into Unitech, right? And you have the satellite on. Check this out. When you zoom in, it changes to 45 degree angle. And you can rotate around it somehow. And you can see things at, at a weird angle. It's like axonometric. So it's still, you can still measure off it and everything. It's not perspective. But yeah, kind of cool, eh? Um, also, if you want to turn that off, it's that. <laughs> Alright, so what we want though is, well, a couple of things actually. First, I need north is up. Have I got that? I think I have, yeah. We need to know what the angle is. So if you notice, I was just drawing this, but rotated around. So my north is actually in that direction. Also, this position, which is actually kind of annoying to do in here, but I know if you go and center the map, it's actually easier to do in Google Earth. In fact, I'll do that in Google Earth. Tell me we've got Google Earth on here. Serious, have you not got Google Earth on the field? Oh, okay. Anyway, you can do it from Google Maps. Um, as soon as you go and do a link, it's these numbers here. Oh, no, sorry. Center map here. And it's still got the other numbers, isn't it? That's not cool. If I go to that, I'll be wrong. I'll be back at the tank club. Oh no. no. That's correct. Okay. So, minus 36.833. So if I go copy that and drop into Archicad, you can actually just go in here. Oh, this has to be decimal degrees. Uh, 174 points. No, that is the same number. That's the same place. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh. Yeah, you can do it with Google Earth. Google Maps is a pain in the bum. Anyway, this is pretty close. It's not going to tell us either, is it? Stupid bloody thing. Oh, here we go. No, it's, still, it's still got the same. We need Google Earth. I can't believe Google Earth isn't on our build. How did that happen? Applications. All right. Yeah, it should be on the Mac side. I don't understand why it's not there. And I also don't understand why, because I've done this before many times. And you go center map, and you go. Can we go to get directions too here? Does it give me a? Uh, ha ha! There we go. Where are we? So that's our. Latitude, that's our longitude. Oops. Copy, paste. Also, no, it's there, so that's 36. Is it east, isn't it? So if we go show in Google Maps, it should. Oops. East. There we go, boom. Right in the right place, excellent. So we've set the location. Um, you can also set um, the north. So in our case, north is in fact... Now this is when you'd actually get the compass, and I'll give you the compass, although you've got to take into consideration magnetic north, or you can use your iPhone. Although there's errors involved in that as well. You've got to remember, the more accurate you are, the more accurate your sun study is going to be, because the sun study needs to know exactly where north is. So if you're a little bit out, um, it's going to make a big difference. So you can see that north would be 
pointing out in that direction. So that means that, oh, crikey, that's confusing, isn't it? So it would be pointing in this direction here. Something like that. Okay. So I would totally recommend that you actually uh, measure that accurately. Notice the, the numbers are a bit funny because it's got north is, uh, is 90 degrees. So you've got to kind of take that into account. But anyway, I think it's about right. Yeah, okay. Um, and just for fun, there is actually a north arrow you can stick on your drawing as well, which is in the object library. And if you just search up here for north, There's a north symbol, and you can choose from lots of different types of north symbols. Hmm, I like you. Okay, and you just drop it down. Just make sure it's not on the rotate. You just go click. Oh, sorry. Follow project north is what we want. Yeah, okay. Sweet. What's cool with that as well is that if you decide later on that, oh, actually, I kind of got the north in the, the wrong direction. Oh, that's right. <laughs> There's also this way of doing it as well. You can actually do it visually. It is coincidence that I chose exactly the same arrow as the set project north. But you see, if I decide it's over there, you'll see that that north arrow changes as well, which is kind of cool. But yeah, you can do the set project north, and you can actually go, uh, actually north's in that direction over here. And that should have changed. If it doesn't, usually a rebuild's in order. That's a bit odd, isn't it? If you go F3, F2, right? You're a pain in the bottom. Actually, now this is a good, this doesn't happen very often, but sometimes you'll see that you've got this refresh, rebuild, and it fixes it. That rebuild, it's very rare that something like that will happen. Like you noticed before when I updated the north, it did change, but then when I did it with that other tool, it didn't change. And you might find that occasionally with um, solid element operations and um, cross sections and things like that, is that. You make some changes and you'd expect it to have changed and it didn't. You know, if you've moved a tree and then in your section, the tree didn't move in the section for some reason. As soon as you do that rebuild, it updates it. Um, likewise, you can just, like, if it's a, this 3D window or the cross section, usually just closing the window and opening it again, it, it forces it to rebuild. So, um, so there wasn't anything, I hadn't done anything wrong, it's just that for some reason Archicad hadn't picked up on the change. That object didn't get to told to update because the, the north had changed. That's actually a new little um, tool that these things here, they used to be somewhere else in the, in the documentation. All right, let's have a little look at the work environment as well. Now, first thing is, if you go and change all the work environment on the computer that you are sitting on right now, it will stick for your account, which is kind of like, okay, that's cool. And most of the time you guys are on the same machines. Um, however, you can, if you go and made a whole bunch of changes that I'm about to show you, you can export these to like your memory stick or your backup drive or whatever, and you can import them into another computer. So if you end up on another computer, it's like, oh, I made all these changes to my computer and now I've got to deal with you know, the defaults again, it's kind of annoying. Um, you can just go and import and you'd import your settings. So you can jump in here and, and have a good old play around. You'll also notice, if you go and screw everything up, right, and so you've gone and you know, closed windows that you shouldn't have closed and moved things around and windows ended up too big and all that sort of carry on. If you go into um, Options, Work Environment, you can see here's all the, the standard ones that came with it, including Standard Profile, which is what you are actually using. So you go Apply Scheme of Profile and you go, yep, apply it, you go OK. Everything goes back to how it used to be when the computer was first set up, basically. 
So that means that you can actually set up your own. So if you remember, we have things like different palettes that we like to use and control boxes. Cool. And I can arrange this all in a, in a fashion that I like. I might just hide the dock here. Not that I won't save that, but just means I don't have to see it. Give myself a little bit of extra screen real estate. So I might like those there. Actually, I might move this down. I've noticed they kind of lock together once you start doing things, which is good in most cases. Cool. That's kind of cool. I like that. Yeah, I've got enough room. I can kind of see that. It's kind of overlapping a little bit, isn't it? Come on, move. Oh, that'll do anyway. Okay. I'm also I'm going to go into the um, sorry, options, work environment. You'll notice that all these are the same as what we saw in, in that pull down. It's just a quicker way of getting access to it. So there's all sorts of stuff, and you don't have to play around with this. Dialog box auto update delay. You remember when you go, oh yeah, that needs to be four point, um, and then it goes and updates, and it's kind of annoying. <laughs> if you want more time, you can change that. So you can change that to like you know two seconds or five seconds or something. Yeah. You know? um, hide locked layers and pop-up palettes. That's kind of cool. So if you Lock a layer, you won't see it, and pop-ups. Okay. You'll actually find there's lots of things in here. Some of them you might think is awesome. Other people might not like it at all. Pet palette. Jump to preferred position. So you can actually put, you know, pet palette normally like pops up near your cursor. If you don't like that, you can put it somewhere and it should stay there. Yeah. Or it will follow the cursor. Um, distance from the cursor. If you find it's always too close, you can set it so it's further away. Yeah. So if I go and say... Far, you'll notice that when I go and click on something, click on a node, the pet palette's further away. Whether or not that's a big issue or not. Wasn't that much further away, was it? When appearing on screen. There you go. See, now it's miles away. So, do I like that? Not really. <laughs> Um, there's also, where are we, blah, 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 I'm in the wrong place again, work environment, yeah, I might just put those back to about where they were, position of text formatting palette, above the text or jump to preferred position, blah, 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 keep Archicad palettes visible, there's all sorts of stuff in here, I'm not going to go through them in that much detail because I don't think you'd remember them all anyway, but by all means get in there and have a little bit of a look, the more you kind of, you know, get used to how Archicad works, you might, you'll find that there's, there's little things that bug you. Nine times out of ten, there's a way of changing that behavior. So, um, yeah, have a good old play. Selection, so the colors that it uses. Um, this can sometimes, if you've got a, a design that's using particular colors, sometimes it's a pain that the default colors that Archicad uses kind of clashes with it, like the background image, yeah, the background color. Here's that tracker. You know that tracker that um, you can have that like set so it's always on. So you move your cursor around and it's always telling you what the distance is. Um, well, in this case, to project zero. Yeah. So you can always see where I am. Again, I don't really want that like that. I like the on demand. That's great. Um, you can have a Z value, although there's not many. You know, so you can actually it'll show what the Z value is in that palette as well, so you can hit Z and it will change the height. Maybe that's cool, I don't know. Usually I think it pops up anyway if it's, if it's in, in demand. And there's lots of other things in there. Again, you can have a play around with it if you like. Uh, mouse constraints, so see it's got like um, a fixed angle of 30 degrees. If you had a particular angle that you were doing in your site, and you, so there might be like, you know, you've got um, a particular angle to go to the driveway uh, or to the roadside, you know, and you, you've got lots of things that are orientated in that direction. You might just want to go, okay, well, actually, I, I want um, a fixed angle of 75 degrees so that when you hold down the shift key, it would lock to 75 degrees. 
so you could do a whole bunch of things on a different angle. If you found that the horizontal and vertical were completely ir irrelevant because you're doing everything at weird, wacky angles and you don't want anything to be horizontal or vertical, you could turn that off. Again, probably not advisable. Um, oh, the cursor snap. So that's, you know, when your cursor will, will snap to something. If you're finding that, you know, you've got Parkinson's or something, you could increase that and, you know, to like 20 pixels. And so if you got pretty close to it and you clicked, it would snap to it. That could also be kind of annoying because you've got to put a tree next to the fence line or something pops onto the edge of the fence. So um, The whole, you know, remember like I was saying how we have this um, CAD thing where you, you click at the beginning of the line, click at the end of the line? If you just can't get your head around that, you can change that to like click and drag. So you're clicking and dragging everything. Um, use wheel for pan, blah, 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 alt zoom. Use wheel for zoom and alt wheel for pan. That's um, middle click anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Guidelines, so you can set up your own. Um, those are those relative guidelines that pop up all the time. And the colours they are. Blah, 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 blah. Lots and lots and lots of stuff. Where it publishes its logs to. Boring. More options. What have we got in here? Update, auto rebuild model and viewports continuously. That there can actually be a pain in the ass if you've got a really, really complicated model. And every time you change something, and it would churn away for ages updating everything. So, you know, if you're on a really slow computer, it's like, I've just got a whole bunch of stuff I just need to do. I don't give a hoot that nothing's getting updated. You could switch that off, and then you have to manually hit rebuild. So, for example, if that north arrow, how that changed, if I switched update auto rebuild model off, that, that arrow wouldn't have moved until I said rebuild. So little things like that. Um, again, oh, enable Archicad sounds. That's annoying. That used to be on by default, and it used to be quite... Quite comical, actually, because if, yeah, if you've got like a, a slab and you go and do... It's not, gonna, not, not even going to work. Come on. A little tink, tink. You get a whole room of people going tink, 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 tink. It kind of drives you insane. <laughs> we should all turn it on. <laughs> Just go into like the... Go into people's computers and just switch it on. I'd never find that. <laughs> yes, you could be evil with this as well. <laughs> um, where was I? Oh, more options. <laughs> I love that. Eh? There's options and options. Oh, there's some more options. Where should we put those? In the more options block. So, show new mission alert and team, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, lots of things in there. Um, I'm slowly making my way down. What's this? 2D hardware acceleration. Oh, yeah, cool. Let's see what that looks like. Excellent. On screen view options, blah, 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 blah. Keyboard shortcuts, anyway. Let's get down. Oh, sorry, actually, I shouldn't go too fast. Um, there's things like data safety and integrity. It will auto save, at the moment, mine's actually set, I didn't realise that, to ultra safe. It will auto save every time I do something. Again, if you've got a really big model and lots of complex things happening, that could be kind of annoying. In fact, I'm surprised it's actually on that. Um, you could so say, okay, well, auto save every five minutes. That's kind of more reasonable. Yeah, so you can change that to auto save every five minutes. Um, where the auto save ends up, so you can actually see it ends up in, so this is actually, you know when your computer crashes? And you're going to open it up, and it will. I, is, have many people had Archicad crash on them? Yeah, a couple. Yeah, and then you open up Archicad, it says, "Oh, there's this file that you know I found. Do you want to open it again?" You know, oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> you know, th what it's actually doing is actually saving that to library application support, something or other. Archicad, I imagine, or Graphisoft. Um, and so you can actually specify where you want it to save those to. Um, so you can say choose location and say right I want all, all my auto saves for this um, project going into assignment number two auto save folder you know and so all of your auto saves would be in that same folder 
Um, the undo limit, so it's set, set to 20. So if you find that you quite often do a whole bunch of stuff and go, oh, I don't like that, undo, 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 you can only do that 20 times. Um, if you want to increase that, by all means do. It does take up more memory and resources of the computer. But yeah, I could say, okay, well actually, let's make that 40 steps. So now it's going to remember the last 40 things that I did, and I could undo up to 40 times. Uh, check hot links and ask for update. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, actually, that's kind of an... Yeah. In the next one, when we do this Imagine Cities, we're going to talk about hot links. Um, and uh, actually, we did kind of do one, that image that you guys were tracing over the top of last, in the last assignment, that was a hot linked file, so it's, it's linked to our document, so if somebody updates that file, what this is doing is it's saying, okay, if I just check that there's been a change in the document, you know, it's going to ask you, do you want to update the file? You know, so you'll get a little pop-up saying, oh, someone's updated the, you know, floor plans sketch, you know, then you can go, oh, okay, yeah, no, that'd be quite handy to update that, or no, I actually just need it as it is now, I've got to finish what I'm doing. You know, or you can say it will automatically update. So as soon as somebody updates a file that you're using, and um, in the next project we're going to we're going to actually create um, like a module, so we can create like um, like a little hut in one Archicad document, and then we can use uh, open up a new Archicad document and then place that hut as if it was an object and place it through our entire drawing, and we have lots and lots of them. And then later on you go, mm, actually my huts need windows, so you can open up that Archicad document, or somebody else could open up that Archicad document and um, add windows to it, and then your drawing with the 150 copies of that heart would all update. So you're not having to go and delete 150 huts and put in the new one. So that's what that's about. Um, um, blah, 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 network update. Don't know, check for updates. Oh, do you want Archicad to check for updates? Special folders, temporary items, blah, 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 caches, all sorts of funny things like that. You might have like um, a computer that was set up with a really, really fast you know, RAID array drive and you want it to do all of its calculations and everything on this really fast hard drive. Um, so that's what you could, you could do in this case. Keyboard shortcuts is really what I want to get to. All right, this has actually got, if you notice, the current menu structure, you can change this as well. Um, so remember I said that we want to create a keyboard shortcut for rendering? So we'd normally go to um, document, um, creative imaging, photo render projection. Now what you do is you select that and then over on this side you do the keyboard shortcut. So if I try to do something like command Z, right? What's command Z? Okay, and it says currently assigned to undo. Hmm. Okay, probably not a good idea. Should I assign it anyway? Probably not a good idea. <laughs> okay, how about control zero? Currently not assigned to anything. Thanks. So now control zero is render. So I've just made my own keyboard shortcut. Actually the photo rendering settings is quite handy too. Maybe I'll go shift control zero for currently not assigned to anything. Cool. So if I go control zero, it'll render. If I go shift control zero, it'll bring up the settings. Just created my own keyboard shortcuts. Um, and you can see there's other ones here as well. So you can do all that. Um, if it was, you can actually look at this um, all commands by theme. So you can see it's completely rearranged all these. And we can actually see you know, there's options and you know, design, document. Yeah, and it's completely changed the way that it looks all commands in alphabetical order. So if you, there's a particular thing that you want to do, but you can't remember what menu it was under, you can find it in there. What's freaky about this is that you'll, you'll probably find tools and things in here that aren't actually available. It's, yeah, it's kind of interesting to have a look in there. It's like, where the heck is that? Transition. It's obviously part of the MEP tools, I imagine, but yeah. So, hey, I could use that for something else. Cool. All right, and again, you can save your um, keyboard shortcuts and, or export them and that sort of carry on. Then I'm going to store it as names. Cool. So I can export that file 
onto my memory stick or whatever. So if I jump onto another computer and I've got all these keyboard shortcuts that I've created, I can go and import those, all those keyboard shortcuts. Um, toolboxes. So you can actually create your own toolboxes as well, which is kind of cool. So if there's like certain things that you just do all the time, you know, a bunch of tools that you like, instead of having like the toolbox on the left hand side, you can make your own up. In theory, it should work fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so you get those two two switched around. But yeah, so you've, you're using things like control for doing lots of your keyboard shortcuts. It should should stick. But yeah, be interested. Yeah, try it out. Tell me. <laughs> you can always go back to the standard one anyway. See, it's got it's always got the standard one there. So if it completely made a mess of your entire program, then yeah, yeah, be interesting. What if you got a Apple keyboard plugged in? <laughs> no, because the command key shows up as the Windows key on. So. Um, yep, all sorts of stuff. You can see like the info box and what the wall has. So if there's certain things in the info box that appears up here for the wall that you don't like, you can actually like hide them and you know, or make them appear. So you can see it's not showing me everything. It doesn't have the log details um, in the info box. You know, I'd have to go into the settings of that of the wall to turn the log options on. You can actually change that, and you can do that for anything. So if there's always a thing you find, okay, on the mesh tool, it's a pain in the ass always having to go into the mesh tool to change that to all ridges smooth. You could go into the mesh tool. I don't even know if you can actually do that or not, but we'll find out. <laughs> I'm not sure which one it would be actually. Maybe properties. Oh, here's a cover fill. So you could switch that on. So now if I go and switch the the mesh tool, you should see that in here it's got the cover fill somewhere. Is that this one? No. Oh, sorry, I've got the Mesh tool. There you go. See, now it's got the cover fill up there and whether or not it's switched on. So if I select it, I can go, actually, no, I don't need a cover fill. So normally I'd have to go into the settings to do that. So if that's something that you find that is quite handy, then you can change it. All right. Um, toolbars and menus. So. Again, menus and toolbars, you can actually make your own up. So you can hear, see here's all the, those toolbars. So if you want to create your own, since I want to create my own menu, that has just a bunch of stuff in it that I use all the time. I can go new menu called Zanes. And I can just go through here. Again, I can go um, commands by theme is probably good because then I can go into... Uh, show all layers. That's kind of cool. I'll have one of those things. <laughs> um, photo render projection, photo rendering settings. I might put that above it. Um, oh, that'll do. Okay. And so now look, there's my own menu. I don't know if that will that actually work. Hey, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, sometimes you find stuff in there that I don't think I've seen a show all layers button somewhere. I suppose it must be in there. Options, maybe. How was it? Yeah. Well, anyway, it's on my menu. So you can actually, and you can actually see my own keyboard shortcuts. Remember, I did the Control Shift. Well, zero, but close, um, close bracket. So you can actually see my keyboard shortcuts in there as well. So if you find that you're always doing the same thing over and over and over, and it's going to be a real pain in the bum, and some of these things are really buried in there, especially things like, you know, if you get into, what is it, design, design extras, accessories, wall accessories, you know. If you're doing that all the time, it's going to get kind of annoying. You can just go, right, I'm going to make my own little menu that I can get quick access to. 
Yeah, because we use create roofs from meshes quite often. Here's the truss maker. Yeah. And that's like one, two, three, four things just to get there. It's like, uh, kind of annoying. Pretty funky, eh? And so you can actually change Archicad to be entirely different. You can make your own version of Archicad like that. You can change all of the menu systems, all of the palettes, the whole lot into your own version of Archicad that nobody else could probably use. <laughs> all right. No, 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 not at all. But yeah, but it's, it's just more of a case of that you kind of, yeah, if you find that something's getting annoying, you can go in there. Anyway, so um, also once you've got that whole work environment, you can save the whole lot and you can go into a new profile called Zanes. Excellent. Actually, I should have actually, actually, I'm just going to delete that for a second. New profile. Oh, yeah, that's cool, yeah, so it's got everything, yeah. All right, and so that's actually gone and saved everything. So if I go back to standard profile, oh, my menu still stayed there. That's kind of interesting. Right, options, work environment, work environment. Zanes, yeah, apply. Cool, I got Zanes back. That's kind of interesting. How come? If I go apply... Huh. I mustn't have gone apply. There we go. Zane's disappears. So does my keyboard shortcuts and everything as well. That kind of sucks. I want my keyboard shortcuts back. Work environment, work environment. Zane's apply scheme. Yep. <coughs> okay. Now everything's back to Zane's again. So I could export that whole lot and import it into another computer and away I go. Okay? All right. Next thing, um, what we're going to do is I'm just going to, because I, I want to have a little bit of a break and then we'll go out and we'll, we'll get some fresh air. Um, so I might do materials next week then. At this stage, when it comes to materials, um, try and take photos of things like the bricks. And when you take a photo of it, you need to take it like very much square on. In fact, it's better to sort of back off a bit and zoom in a little bit because you get less distortion. Um, I've, I've just, you, know, just, you only have to do a couple of textures. I just want to see that you can create your own texture and apply it to an object. Okay? So um, things like the bricks is, a, is an obvious one. And it will look really cool because it will look like this building when the bricks are exactly the same. Okay? Um, and you want to get quite a large portion of the wall as well. Okay? You've got to remember, um, you should be able to zoom in to that image, um, you don't need to zoom into it any closer than what you're ever going to render. So there's no point having a, a 19 megapixel image of a single brick, because it's not going to repeat very well, it's going to look ugly, and you don't need to see the grains of sand in that brick unless you had one render where you were like ultra, ultra close to a brick. Um, so you kind of want to get like sort of, you know, sort of that sort of height from the wall, from the floor, that kind of area of brick, so it doesn't repeat so obviously. And we're going to go through um, how to how to um, make them repeat really nicely and things like that. And um, anything else that there's concrete or textures. Remember, um, the courtyard though, you're going to bulldoze it. You can do whatever you like in there, so you don't have to go and place the paths and exactly where they are, unless that's part of your design is to retain that. Um, so you don't need to be taking photos of the concrete out there if you're not going to be using it in your design. Make sense? Um, but the bricks and yeah, doors, perhaps. The windows we're going to custom build. So we're going to actually build custom windows that fit into those. Into, well, yeah. We've got some crazy shaped windows in this building. And um, so I'm going to show you uh, CAD Images um, window builder. And you can make any window of any shape and description you could possibly imagine. Uh, file management and work environment, layers. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, it's also a good idea. I kind of talked about it already and I've probably rammed it down your throat. Is create layers for everything. Um, especially with this project, you want to be able to switch, you know, certain things on and off. So being able to have those layers in the first place is a really good idea. Um, just always think about what you're drawing and what, you know, what layer it's going to go on. Um, 
you know, these construction lines for, for drawing it up, I don't want them on the same layer as the lines that I'm using to place objects or, you know, um, add some detail or something like that. I'm going to have to switch these off at some point. So they should be on its own layer. Um, actually, just going back to that for just a brief second, don't be afraid as well to change the colour of them on a regular basis. So I'd quite often, if I did this side, I'd, they might be blue, and then when I start doing the other side, I change the colour to orange so that it doesn't get too confusing. And put the walls in um, after you've done a bunch because if you go away and come back tomorrow, all you see is a whole bunch of lines just all over your page, and it's like, what the hell is that? I've got no idea, and it takes you a little while to figure out what you're doing at the time. So put in a whole bunch, and then start drawing lines. The cool thing is, is that once you've got those guides there, it's just a matter of going click, 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 click. It's pretty fast. Um, okay, we'll have a little break, eh? Yeah, there's one. There's a couple of little things that uh, I'll talk about um, after we've had a break, um, but it'll be kind of a bit more fun. All right. Um, yeah, we'll see you in about 20 minutes, 15 minutes, something like that.